Hello everyone. Before we get to the reading of the Word of God, I wanted to take an opportunity to help explain a few words that people tend to have a little bit of trouble understanding when it comes to the Holy Bible. There are some people who say they have trouble understanding the words thee and thou and ye, and I want to explain just a couple of moments as to the importance of having these words and what these words actually mean. In the English language, we have the word you. The problem with the word you is that you can be talking to one person and say you, and you'd be right. At the same time, you can be talking to thousands of people and say you, and you'd still be right. The King James translators understood that the word you can be both singular and plural. Therefore, they wanted to implement a simple formula so that the readers of the Bible that would later be called the King James would be able to understand the Bible easily. So that when there's a conversation going on, that's where you'll find the use of words like thee and thou and ye is when a conversation is going on. When there's a conversation going on, sometimes the speaker begins by talking to one person and then begins talking to a group of people and then back again to a single person. Simply using the word you, you would never know when that transition takes place. So the King James translators implemented this formula that I want to teach you. And this is what it is. If a speaker is speaking to only one person, they'll use a T word, thee, thou, thy, or thine. So whenever you hear thee, thou, thy, or thine in a conversation, it means there's only one person being spoken to or spoken about. But if there's more than one person being spoken about, they would use a Y word, you, your, or ye. Whenever you see you, your, or ye in the King James Bible, it will always mean there's more than one person being spoken to. Always. Never forget that. That's a very important rule in the King James Bible. Whenever you see the word you, your, or ye, it always means there's more than one person being spoken about. So when Jesus told Nicodemus, Marvel not that I said unto thee, ye must be born again. That's the way it's translated in the King James Bible. He's saying, marvel not that I said unto thee, thee is singular, meaning that he's talking to Nicodemus in particular. Ye, now ye is one of the Y words. It's plural. Therefore, it's always plural in the King James Bible. Ye would be all of you, everyone. So Jesus is saying, marvel not that I said unto thee, that's speaking to Nicodemus directly, ye, all of you, must be born again. By bringing in the these and the yees, you now understand when a speaker is speaking only about one person or whether a speaker is speaking about a group of people. Which one of the T words is used depends on the context. Which one of the Y words that are used is dependent on on the context. Without those words, you would never know when a speaker is transitioning from speaking to just the one he's talking to or she's talking to, to speaking to a larger group of people. And one last thing before we go, there are some words that over the last 400 years have changed definition. One of the words is the word suffer. So when you hear the word suffer in the King James Bible, it means to allow or to permit someone to do something. It doesn't mean what it does today as somebody's in pain. So when you hear in the King James Bible the word suffer, it means to allow or to permit. So now that you know what thee and thou and ye means and all of those great words and the purpose of having them in the Bible, let's get to the reading of the Word of God. The Epistle of Paul to Titus, Chapter 1. Paul, a servant of God and an apostle of Jesus Christ, according to the faith of God's elect and the acknowledging of the truth which is after godliness, in hope of eternal life which God, that cannot lie, promised before the world began, but hath in due times manifested his word through preaching, which is committed unto me according to the commandment of God our Savior, to Titus, mine own son after the common faith, grace, mercy, and peace, from God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ our Savior. For this cause left I thee in Crete, that thou shouldest set in order the things that are wanting, and ordain elders in every city, as I had appointed thee. 
If any be blameless, the husband of one wife, having faithful children not accused of riot or unruly. For a bishop must be blameless, as the steward of God, not self-willed, not soon angry, not given to wine, no striker, not given to filthy lucre, but a lover of hospitality, a lover of good men, sober, just, holy, temperate, holding fast the faithful word as he hath been taught, that he may be able by sound doctrine both to exhort and to convince the gainsayers. For there are many unruly and vain talkers and deceivers, especially they of the circumcision, whose mouths must be stopped, who subvert whole houses, teaching things which they ought not, for filthy lucre's sake. One of themselves, even a prophet of their own, said, The Cretans are always liars, evil beasts, slow bellies. This witness is true. Wherefore rebuke them sharply, that they may be sound in the faith, not giving heed to Jewish fables and commandments of men that turn from the truth. Unto the pure all things are pure, but unto them that are defiled and unbelieving is nothing pure, but even their mind and conscience is defiled. They profess that they know God, but in works they deny Him, being abominable and disobedient, and unto every good work reprobate. Chapter 2 but speak thou the things which become sound doctrine, that the aged men be sober, grave, temperate, sound in faith, and charity, in patience. The aged women likewise, that they be in behavior as becometh holiness, not false accusers, not given to much wine, teachers of good things. That they may teach the young women to be sober, to love their husbands, to love their children, to be discreet, chaste, keepers at home, good, obedient to their own husbands, that the word of God be not blasphemed. Young men likewise exhort to be sober-minded, in all things shewing thyself a pattern of good works, in doctrine shewing uncorruptness, gravity, sincerity, sound speech that cannot be condemned, that he that is of the contrary part may be ashamed, having no evil thing to say of you. Exhort servants to be obedient unto their own masters, and to please them well in all things, not answering again, not purloining, but shewing all good fidelity, that they may adorn the doctrine of God our Saviour in all things. For the grace of God that bringeth salvation hath appeared to all men, teaching us that, denying ungodliness and worldly lusts, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world, looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us, that he might redeem us from all iniquity, and purify unto himself a peculiar people, zealous of good works. These things speak and exhort, and rebuke with all authority. Let no man despise thee. Chapter 3 Put them in mind to be subject to principalities and powers, to obey magistrates, to be ready to every good work, to speak evil of no man, to be no brawlers, but gentle, shewing all meekness unto all men. For we ourselves also were sometimes foolish, disobedient, deceived, serving diverse lusts and pleasures, living in malice and envy, hateful and hating one another. But after that the kindness and love of God our Saviour toward man appeared, not by works of righteousness which we have done, but according to His mercy He saved us, by the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Ghost, which he shed on us abundantly through Jesus Christ our Saviour, that being justified by his grace, we should be made heirs according to the hope of eternal life. This is a faithful saying, and these things I will that thou affirm constantly, that they which have believed in God might be careful to maintain good works. These things are good and profitable unto men." But avoid foolish questions and genealogies, and contentions and strivings about the law, for they are unprofitable and vain. A man that is an heretic after the first and second admonition reject, knowing that he that is such is subverted and sinneth, being condemned of himself. When I shall send Artemis unto thee, or Tychicus, be diligent to come unto me to Nicopolis, for I have determined there to winter. Bring Zenos the lawyer and Apollos on their journey diligently, that nothing be wanting unto them. And let ours also learn to maintain good works for necessary uses, that they be not unfruitful. All that are with me salute thee. Greet them that love us in the faith. 
Grace be with you all. Amen.